Today we're diving deep into India's indigenous light combat aircraft the HAL Tejas of the 2026 era. This jet is not just another fighter in the Air Force hangar. It's a statement of self-reliance and modern capability, built to meet the demands of today's aerial battlefield while being cost-effective and agile. To understand it fully, we will walk through its design, its performance, its cockpit, and systems, the weapons it carries, its production and cost context, and finally what to expect in terms of delivery and service. By the end you'll know everything you need to about the Tejas 2026. Let us start with the design and structural layout. The Tejas is a single-engine multi-role fighter built around a tailless delta wing configuration, meaning it lacks separate horizontal stabilizers and instead uses elevons on the delta wing. This gives it high maneuverability at high angles of attack, and a simplified, lighter airframe. The airframe uses advanced composites and aluminium lithium alloys to reduce weight and increase structural strength. In fact, the manufacturer reports that composite materials make up about 45% of the airframe by weight and some 90 plus percent of its exterior surface area. This means the jet is lighter, more agile, and uses less maintenance intensive structure than older heavy fighters. It has a length of about 13.2 meters, a wingspan of 8.2 meters, and height of about 4.4 meters. The maximum takeoff weight is in the region of 13,300 to 13,500 kilograms. These dimensions and weights make it one of the lightest multi role supersonic fighters in the world. You may think lighter must mean weaker, but in fact, it means easier to accelerate, faster to turn, and cheaper to operate, which for many air forces is a huge advantage. Under the skin, the Tejas features a digital fly-by-wire FBW flight control system with quadruple redundancy. What that means in practice, the pilot can fly more aggressively with less risk of losing control, the computer assists in keeping the aircraft within safe operational envelopes even at high angles of attack or during rapid maneuvers. The delta wing and relaxed static stability design give the Tejas responsive handling, and the FBW makes it pilot-friendly even under demanding conditions. On the matter of stealthiness or signature management, while this is not a stealth aircraft in the same class as 5th generation fighters, it does incorporate aerodynamic shaping, radar absorbent materials, and a smaller radar cross-section due to its compact size and composite skin. These features reduce its detectability and improve survivability in contested airspace. Moving on to power plant and performance, the Tejas uses a single general electric F404 in 20 turbofan engine in current production variants. This engine provides the thrust needed for rapid acceleration, high speeds, and sustained maneuvers. According to available figures, the aircraft achieves top speeds of about Mach 1.8 at altitude, a service ceiling in excess of 50,000 feet, and internal fuel capacity that gives a ferry range of over 1,800 miles when aided by external tanks. Its combat radius is shorter roughly 500 km to 850 km depending on configuration given the high fuel burn during combat operations. What this means in simple terms, the Tejas can climb quickly, engage a target, evade or reposition, and head home with respectable endurance especially useful for a nation operating across varied terrain from deserts to high altitude plateaus. The payload capacity is up to about 4000 kg on 8 external hard points, meaning it can carry a meaningful weapons load for both air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missions. Now let us talk about sensors, avionics, and the cockpit because they are the heart of a modern combat aircraft's effectiveness. The 2026 era Tejas comes with modern glass cockpit layouts, multifunction displays, a helmet-mounted queuing system, heads-up display HUD, and a wide-angle view for the pilot. The avionics include mission computers, digital fly-by-wire systems, navigation attack systems, 
and electronic warfare suites. Later production versions of Tejas incorporate an active electronically scanned array AESA radar or are planned to, significantly boosting detection, tracking and engagement ranges. In layman's terms, the pilot sees more, reacts faster, is less surprised, and has more eyes out in the sky. Coupled with electronic warfare self-protection, radar warning receivers, chaff flares, countermeasures and a modular design, the aircraft is built for modern threats. The cockpit itself is designed for ease of transition, the throttle and stick is intuitive, the displays are large and clear, and pilot workload has been reduced with automation in many non-critical tasks, so the human focus remains on strategy and tactics rather than fiddling with levers. Weapons and Roles, Tejas is fully multi-role. On its external hardpoints it can carry a mix of air-to-air -air missiles short range and beyond visual range, air-to-ground precision bombs, rockets, anti-ship missiles, and fuel tanks for extended range. Internally it carries a 23mm twin-barrel cannon for close-in combat. Some of the missiles approved or planned include the Indian-developed Astra BVR missile, Israeli-Pakistani systems like Derby or Python 5, and anti-ship missiles in development integration. What this means, one jet can be tasked with intercepting enemy aircraft, providing close air support, striking ground or sea targets, all in the same sortie if needed. From a layman's angle, think of it as a multi-tooled fighter where one plane can do the job of three older ones, because sensors, weapons and avionics are integrated and flexible. Now let us talk about cost, production, and deployment because that matters a lot. The Tejas program is driven by the idea of affordable defense providing modern capability without the huge price tag of heavyweight 4.5 or 5th generation fighters. While exact current unit price figures are less reliably public, estimates place the cost per jet significantly lower than many imported fighters. The Indian government and HAL have placed large orders for example, 83 jets of the MK-1A variant have been ordered in recent years, making the Tejas one of the largest scale fighter procurements in Indian aerospace. Production ramp-up is underway, HAL plans to deliver 16 to 24 aircraft annually in the coming years. Engine Supply Manufacturing of composite structures, avionics, weapon integration, and supply chain scaling are all part of the ramp-up strategy. What this means for the defense-savvy viewer, Tejas is not a boutique project, but a mass-production fighter aimed at replacing older jets such as MiG-21S and boosting squadron strength. For the non-technical viewer, more jets in the air means better national defense coverage and quicker response times. What about release and service entry the earlier versions of Tejas have already been inducted into the Indian Air Force, for the next generation upgrade the 2026 era variant we're talking about the deliveries are set to ramp up during 2025 to 2026. For example, the MK1A variant has begun production and first deliveries to the IAF are expected through 2026. With production facilities and engine deliveries stabilizing, full squadron induction is expected from 2026 onwards. That means by mid to late decade you will routinely see Tejas jets in frontline squadrons across India, replacing older jets and forming the backbone of the fighter fleet. From a global export perspective, Tejas is also being pitched to friendly nations looking for modern light fighter capability at affordable cost. Before we wrap up, let us summarize the key takeaways in a way every viewer should remember. First, lightweight but modern. Because of its composite structure and FBW control system, the Tejas is agile, quick and cost efficient. Second, multi-role flexibility. With an advanced sensor suite, modern avionics and a full complement of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons, it can cover multiple mission profiles. Third, Indian indigenous content and cost advantage. 
By designing and manufacturing large parts of the jet domestically, the Tejas reduces dependence on imports and enables a scalable production line. Fourth, production scale and future readiness. With ramp up underway, the 2026 era Tejas will not just be a handful of jets, it will become a core part of the fighter fleet. And finally, upgrade path and relevance. With AESA radar, electronic warfare systems, network-centric capability and export potential, the Tejas is more than a baseline fighter it's a foundation for future growth. So if you ask, should we care about the Tejas the answer is yes, because it proves that a smaller nation aerospace industry can field a modern supersonic multi-role combat aircraft, in meaningful numbers, without breaking the bank. For air forces needing agility, flexibility and affordability rather than raw stealth or ultra-heavy payload, this is a smart solution. Thank you for watching. If you found this overview useful, hit like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments which aspect of the Tejas you'd like to see next, perhaps it's weapons integration, pilot perspective, export variants, or maintenance and logistics in the field. Until next time, keep your eyes on the skies and stay curious. Feel free to adjust phrasing, timing or insert pauses for visuals and b-roll. If you like, I can provide a version with timestamps or scene-by-scene -scene breakdown.